The PGA Reach is the 501c3 charitable foundation of the PGA of America. The mission of the PGA Reach is to impact lives of youth, military, and diverse populations by enabling access to PGA professionals, PGA sections, and the game of golf. Today, we visit with Ron Lucas. Ron is a PGA professional who is the lead instructor for the PGA Hope Tri-State. Ron tells us about his experiences and shares some stories about the program. Um, tell us, and, and I think you, you alluded to obviously with, with your dad being a veteran, but how did you come into really wanting to work with the veterans in Western Pennsylvania? Well, in uh, 1992, I attended down in Harrisonburg, Virginia, a uh, USGA, PGA, and uh, the Amputee International Golf Tournament uh, for an educational two-day. And I saw these guys with uh, their prosthesis, uh, wheelchairs, Vietnam vets, heirs and people that I had grown up with and uh, knew a lot of my friends that went into the Vietnam War. And so I had a connection there watching these guys and the challenges that they had to uh, overcome. And then with my connection with polio, I could relate. So in 2008, uh, Chris Nowak, uh, who is now with the PGA Hope, brought a group in from over in Philadelphia, Baltimore, DC area, uh, to do a special one day event over at Scally's Golf Center. And I was only one of two golf professionals that volunteered to be there and to assist the uh, um, veterans. Uh, I met a guy, uh, he was a World War II vet. He lost uh, his legs in World War II and he was a book in itself. Uh, he was in the army. He was uh, a small, short guy, so they had him out uh, sort of in, in the front of the invasion of Normandy. And uh, he was telling his very special story, hit by a uh, landmine and uh, was on the roadside. The German tanks had gone by him. He could have been bayoneted. He played dead uh, through that first day of the invasion of Normandy. And then he was found by a... Uh, a military guy, uh, first aid, dragged back to a hospital in Paris, shipped back home uh, on a ship, the Queen Mary, uh, to Atlantic City where they had all the prosthesis and um, uh, got a leg, uh, got found a girl, um, got into dancing, her and I, her and him got into dancing and they uh, had five kids and uh, he only had uh, himself left. So a story like that is very moving. So you want to see what you can do for a guy like that. So that was 2008. And then 2016, um, David Windsor came in. Prior to that, in 2011, we had something here with Bill Kerp and uh, Jim Chikra in the uh, RMU Dome over at the RMU facility for a two-day seminar with Penn State and Salute Military Golfers Association. That's where I met up with uh, Judy Alvarez. And uh, we were seeing these um, opportunities to help these guys in wheelchairs and so on. And so, you know, to uh, have that background with the club making, I saw an opportunity to adjust and adapt golf clubs for them. Uh, to have the challenges that I had to see I could relate. The uh, story in 2008 to me was another movie that you could put on uh, today, and it would be a fantastic story of what those guys went through in World War II and my father being a vet. So you can see how all the connections say, I want to be a part of this and I want to give back to the game of golf. I want to do something that I can see that I can help those vets. And uh, that passion uh, has given me the opportunity to have those Patriot Awards for four years in a row. Um, I put my heart and soul into it. Uh, because um, there's not many of those World War II guys left. And to be seeing some of those special stories, which I can tell you about uh, in the future, I can tell you that they're very moving and uh, uh, our fellow golf professionals and anybody that has an opportunity should not miss that chance to get to those guys.
Yeah, yeah. How, how true, Ron. And, and we will. We will get to some of those stories here in a second. Ron, if you can kind of highlight a little bit about the programs that you're working with. I know you're in a couple different facilities and, and doing a couple different things. So uh, here's your opportunity to kind of uh, tell us about those and uh, go from there. Yeah. So from that Penn State Salute Military Golfers Association in 2011, you just don't go to an educational seminar and say, boy, I learned some things here and leave it drop. You have to continue it. So it was a little bit of a battle. Uh, challenges, obstacles, money is always going to be there. Uh, challenges uh, with uh, Robert Morris University, how to get started, how to get connected with the VA hospitals, where to get your vets from and uh, get them out of their room of gloom and doom. Uh, so we started the program in 2011 with uh, Robert Morris University, and uh, to this day, uh, we are continuing that relationship, doing a six-week program in the springtime, six-week program in the fall, and that has started since 2011. Uh, then uh, in 2016 came David Windsor Educational Seminar, which I put on in coordinating with him up at the... Um, Woodlands Foundation, which is a fantastic facility for these guys in wheelchairs. And so with that, uh, we uh, continued from the RMU program and was able to do something in the summertime uh, with the adaptive golf. And that started in 2016. So in 2017, he passed that over to the PGA Hope. At that time was Molly Haga and uh, Chris Nowak. So Chris Nowak and I go back uh, to the days of 2008. So we had a uh, past relationship. And then another special guy who's no longer in the area, but he's down there in Florida, Buzz Bryan. And Buzz was uh, a, a Marine. He knew Chris Nowak. He was involved with the Fisher House over there in the Oakland Veterans uh, Facility. Uh, his main focus was to keep these guys from um, jumping off the bridge, committing suicide, getting them out of their room of gloom and doom. And uh, so we got him connected with our program in 2016. He saw the uh, opportunities for the vets, another great uh, invitation to the game of golf. And so from there in 2017, we worked with Buzz Bryan, Chris Nowak, and uh, Molly Haga. Uh, to do the tri-state uh, section in the Pittsburgh area. And then in 2018, as you know, that was changed hands and uh, PGA America took over the PGA Hope a little bit more. So we continued on the program. So now we have a program in April and May with our Robert Morris in the spring, June and July with the PGA Hope and September and October with the uh, uh, RMU fall program. Well, we brought in a new group last year, which was the Southwest Veterans Center. And I met a great guy who's the uh, activities director, and his name is Chris Beach. And Chris and I hit it off because we're particular in how we do business, the communication, the coordination. He liked what we did. He had heard about us through Jerry Coyne, who uh, we worked with when he was uh, a VA administrator with the Robert Morris uh, spring and fall programs. And so we had that networking. And so now comes um, how we uh, were able to hook up with Chris. And Chris says the vets uh, over there, that was their first uh, introduction to the game of golf. And in the uh, spring and in summer with the PGA Hope and back in the fall, he says, I wanna continue on with you, Ron, working with my vets. How about coming to the hospital in the activities room and maybe doing two sessions uh, a month in the evenings? And that would be a great opportunity to have the vets get more interested or continue on. And so now we're not just doing it once or twice a season. Uh, we're doing it basically the spring, summer, fall, and winter. And so that's been great. Uh, the majority of those guys are in wheelchairs. So back to my equipment adapting and uh, working with people who have a lot of uh, severe injuries and um, uh, a lot of situations that says you got to get them out of that room. You got to get them active. And uh, we continue on with that relationship. 
you know, which is very, very special because the toughest thing is uh, a vet has to sell this program to another vet. Golf professionals, uh, myself, knowing uh, Buzz Bryan, Chris Nowak, uh, Molly Haga, uh, Laura Miller, and so on, we, we can do our things. We can try to do some stuff, but you're not going to get anywhere if you don't have the vets. And a vet has to be selling it to another vet. And so that spurs off into some other my stories of how those vets are really appreciated what we do, how we do things, and we continue on that relationship. So we now work with the VA Heinz, which is a federal hospital down in Aspenwall. And we work with the Southwest Veterans Center, which is a state run up here in uh, Washington Boulevard. So you have uh, more opportunities to branch out to get to different vets. Ron, that's that's incredible. Um, and, you know, certainly your marketing and, and your promotion has certainly helped a lot. But you mentioned a little bit about some of these success stories and there, there's countless stories. Share with us a couple of those stories, the ones that really, you know, really stand out. Well, here's a, a gentleman. His name is Tom Council. He is a Marine. He was a Vietnam vet, lost both both of his legs. And he came to our very first session in 2016 with the Adaptive Golf up at the Woodlands. He was brought in uh, through the VA Heinz uh, Federal Hospital on a bus. He, uh, <coughs> in my first session, I always like to introduce the vets, uh, have them say a little bit about their background, why they're here, any interest, did they play the game of golf? Well, when it came to um, Tom Council, uh, he uh, says, I don't know why I'm here. I never played the game in a golf before. I uh, don't have any legs. Uh, I'm just here because of my buddy, Ed Bechtold. Uh, and there was four of them in a room. They were all Vietnam vets. They were all wheelchair bound and they had this um, camaraderie. And so he says, I came because of him. So the uh, story uh, then proceeds to have Tom Council uh, make that very first putt. And you talk about that story of hooked on golf. So he makes this putt and he lights up the whole room. He then asked me to get him some equipment. Then he asked me to get him a golf ball because he wants to put it on his wheelchair and has it as a knob for his forward and reverse. So now he's proud to be in the game of golf. And uh, he was one of our storylines when we were on a television uh, news, uh, I think it was Channel 11, a few years ago. And uh, he came off very nicely. And uh, one of the things he always said was that uh, every vet, and he would tell these, uh, we would have some new vets, some come, some go, for obvious reasons, physical, mental, whatever. And he says, everybody that comes here should bring a vet next time. And so now he's not only uh, liking the game of golf, he's a PR salesman and promoter of the program. So unfortunately, we lost him about two years ago. And I attended the ceremony, very, very moving. And his uh, buddy who introduced us was Ed Bechtold. And he was the last of the, uh, the four that were in the room. And you want to talk about a very emotional time that uh, really sets uh, into my heart and my memories, but a very special guy. Another guy was Chuck Rock. Uh, he was a Vietnam vet, uh, lost his leg, so on and so forth. Played the game of golf before, but he got so in involved into what we were doing that uh, he was able to uh, try to pitch in financially, try to do what he could to bring the guys in. Uh, he was always there when you needed him. I called him one of my uh, committee members and we had a great time and they, afterwards we would have a beverage or two. And so we would continue on our friendships. And unfortunately, we lost him about two years ago. And so that's special story. But one more and, and possibly two. Uh, 97 year old from the Southwest Veterans Center. Guy's name is Regis. And Regis, uh, 97 years old, World War II, uh, in the Pacific Theater, uh, Burma, and uh, had the history, um, wheelchair, not really good use of his left side. And uh, he was another one of those resistors. I don't know why I'm here, but uh, 
you know, Chris Veach brought him along. You got to give it a try. Try it one time. Well, ended up to be that uh, he liked the game so much uh, that he had perfect attendance of all of our spring programs in the RMU, the summer program with the PGA Hope, and then the fall program with the PGA um, uh, RMU program. So you got six, eight, 14, that's 20 times in one year that the guy did it. Plus then I would go on site. So now he's not only, you know, 97 years old and never playing the game of golf before, he's liking it. And uh, he got uh, a ball to get put on his wheelchair. Uh, he wanted uh, uniforms, cap, always would be dressed up properly because that's the way they were brought up in the military or at the home life. Back when these guys were, you know, being brought up like myself, um, you know, you had to dress properly, you had to have your shirt tucked in and so on and so forth. So uh, again, a good role model. And finally, we got one who uh, was in the same Southwest uh, Veterans Center. Uh, his name is Mark. He's on my committee, uh, wheelchair bound as well. Uh, but uh, the best story I can tell you about is that he never played the game of golf before. He got hooked on it. He wanted to get better. He got better because he put so much time and effort in it. He was a PR guy, always selling the product to all the vets in the hospital. And um, uh, when we finished up, before we started our winter program with them, he was the initiator that says, we got to continue this. So when we finished up in the PGA Hope last year in 2019, his sister came to see him. And, uh, you know, I like to take pictures. Well, Mark, Mark was always a tough guy, never smiling enough. And I always busted his stone saying, you put a smile on your face. So when Chris sent me an email after we uh, had the program finished for 2019, before we started our on-site program, uh, he said his uh, Mark Alice sisters came and said for the very first time that she can remember, she saw him with a smile on his face. That he loved the program and what we were doing for those guys so much. So uh, those those special moments, and you know, bring a get me a little choked up for the reasons that you got to be there to understand. So. Yeah, Ron, that is that's it. That's an that's incredible. And, you know, the, the incredible stories and, and they're the they're the things right there, Ron, I'm sure that uh, that motivate you and, and give you the, you know, the wherewithal to continue these programs. And Ron, talk a little bit about uh, you've been very, very successful in your programs, obviously. Talk about, you know, your Patriot Award. Um, you've won won those multiple times. Um, and also the the award that you won back in uh, back in 2019 from the uh, from the veterans folks. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that uh, was another special moment that uh, took me by surprise. Uh, again, the relationship that you start developing, uh, the day-to-day -day work ethic that they see that you care about the vets. Well, that's Chris Veach. He cares about the veterans. Uh, he's not there just to get a paycheck. He's there to take care and do whatever he can for those guys. In fact, we have a putting green project that they are uh, involved with. We're trying to raise some money for uh, on site of the hospital, which has never been done before. They never had the game of golf before. But Chris and his uh, commandant uh, named uh, Rich Adams were very, very instrumental into continuing on uh, the winter program. And prior to that, uh, they were involved with the uh, a group, and I'm trying to uh, make sure I don't make a mistake, uh, but that's on um, the file with the uh, display case at the Southwestern. There was a, uh, uh, they are state run, and so they're involved with a group called PACA, and it's, uh, I think it stands for Pennsylvania Coalition of um, American Health Care, okay, something like that, P-A-C-A-H. And so they had a, uh, um, a statewide um, from all the hospitals, not necessarily all the veterans, but all the hospital and uh, healthcare systems that they were involved with. And they uh, had nominations from each one of the hospitals. Well, uh, 
behind my back or not knowingly, they had nominated me for what they called the Innovation Award. And it was the uh, state uh, and their um, uh, award ceremony was a luncheon over at the, uh, I think the Hilton over there off of Green Tree. And they says, would you like to come to lunch? And I said, sure. He says, well, you can meet some guys and Rich will be there, the commandant. And, you know, if you can, that would be great. So this was, I think, in August. And so I attended the luncheon and he says, um, OK, here, here is where we're sitting. And and it was a buffet. And here, here's here. This is so and so that's so and so. And uh, we continued to have lunch. And I was in the middle of a fork full of food. And lo and behold, they started the presentation and he said, our first award goes to so-and-so and they did and they came up on stage. And then our second award is what we call the Innovation Award. And the recipient is Ron Lucas from PGA Hope. And I'm half full of, you know, in my mouth and totally blindsided. So Chris and I got up there, he was choked up, I was choked up. And uh, you know, again, another special moment of um, the relationship that you can have with these uh, different organizations and the respect that is, we say trust and respect is earned, you're earning it. And when they see something that they care about, which is the veterans, and they see a person who is giving back to the veterans and not self-serving, uh, that was the uh, highlight of 2019. So to have that, compounded with the, um, uh, you know, Patriot Award from the section, uh, you know, you can't get any better than that. And what a fantastic year. And then we had Dennis McClure. So Dennis was another uh, opportunity that I saw for recognition of our programs and also uh, for the Tri-State PGA in the Pittsburgh area. Dennis uh, hooked up with us back in 2016. 2017 and 2018, he wrote a letter and he was stating about, and it was a very moving letter as well. He had some back injuries, neck injuries that put him incapacitated. He was in the US Army, but he also had some PTS and uh, that uh, creeps up to those guys. And he used to be a golfer and he didn't think he was going to ever play the game again because of his back injuries. Well, we got uh, hooked up and uh, it meant so much to him that he wrote this letter. And, and what it, the letter basically was, is what we are involved with, and that is to get them out of the room and gloom and doom. Give them a uh, purpose, give them some activities, which golf did for him. And he was able to pick up the game again and get enjoyment. So I nominated him to the very first one last year for the PGA Wellness and uh, connected with that letter that he wrote because if you read the letter, there would be no other candidate that would be better suited for that. So of the 41 sections and of the PGA hopes, he was one of 20 that was um, not just nominated, but selected. And that was another special moment uh, that uh, Dennis and I had created. He had, um, uh, I got, gave him the ambassador award at our PGA Hope. And I think that's where the PGA National came up with that because that's who they are. When I talked to Laura and I says, you're gonna love this guy. He's definitely an ambassador for what we do and how we do things. Lo and behold, they came up with that uh, terminology, but uh, irregardless, that's who they are. So those 20 are out there uh, being proof of the product and the time and effort and uh, our, what we do for the veterans. Yeah, absolutely, Ron. And, and, and thank you, certainly not enough for, you know, all of the work and uh, everything you've done to foster these relationships and, you know, help these veterans and, you know, get out of that doom and gloom and get them into, you know, get them to the dome or get them to uh, the woodlands or just get them out of their rooms and get them, you know, get them moving and, and getting them have feeling that they have their purpose and they have a lot of fun with you. Ron, in closing, what would you say to a vet that, you know, they've seen the program, they're, they've, they're looking at it, they're considering it. Why should they get, you know, why should they get out and, uh, and join your programs, Ron? Well, my answer is very short and simple, believe it or not. <laughs> and that is <clears throat> bring them one time. 
come to us one time. After that, it's on us and they will come back because that's who we are. <clears throat> we want them to have fun. We want them to show them the fundamentals of the game of golf. I introduced them to a team concept initially. I mean, we don't wait to have this blossom. We start them into that team concept because typically, you know, in the military, they're going to have their groups. They're going to have their divisions. They're going to have their buddies in the barracks and they're going to have that relationship. <clears throat> so you got that there. And then they want to also have the situation of uh, the particulars of uh, some competition because they, they need to test what we're teaching them and how that is going to affect them in the long run uh, is not just, uh, all right, well, we, we showed them how to grip a golf club and that was it. No, they come back because I use little trophies. I use a little bit of things that um, have them uh, get their enthusiasm. As you know, I'm the committee, and that's part of the uh, concept where, you know, they would start giving me some, oh, this isn't fair. I says, the committee says this is the way it's going to be. Otherwise, you're going to get a penalty of one stroke. And so <laughs> you start that John back and forth, and you keep it more fun. You keep it more relaxed, and it's not so stuffy. And that gives them a purpose, again, to be a part of a team. And at the end of our programs, we always have a nice food and beverage and we have a trophy <clears throat> and that trophy means something. They don't get to take it home. They get to display it on their particular hospital, uh, but it's uh, something that's a tradition and they all love it. Ron, you, you said it perfect. You're giving these, uh, you're giving these vets hope and you're giving them a purpose. And uh, Ron, obviously, we want to uh, continue these discussions with you, um, you know, and, and keep the, you know, keep the, the lines of communication open with our HOPE program and our, and our vets. And uh, we want to thank you, Ron, so much for your time here today. Um, we look forward to, uh, to working with you and the vets moving forward. Yeah, and in the future, I think I have a few other uh, areas of gentlemen that I'd like to introduce and uh, sort of uh, continue on to understand what we're all about and how it all uh, becomes a success. So one is from the VA hospital, one is a retired VA administrator who's very uh, proactive and supportive, and the other one is uh, Dennis McClure. And, and so there, there's three other individuals in three different sections uh, that we have, um, you know, connected with uh, that I think that would be a nice uh, little, you know, spurring on to the next uh, opportunity to tell them what we're all about. Uh, I have to say one other thing, the American Legion post 980 that we have developed a relationship, they, they really enjoy us. And that's uh, where we are able to get a lot of support and continue on uh, having other items, not just PGA Hope related, not just as an instructor, but we actually take them to golf courses. They have fun and they're part of the dinner and so on and so forth. So I did not want to be remiss in, in making sure that there's other things that we can do to show what Pittsburgh is all about. Ron, I, I think that's perfect. Uh, again, thank you so much for your time. We'll look forward to uh, to talking to those three other individuals here soon. Um, continued great work, and we'll talk to you real soon.